<clears throat> Grace, mercy, peace. They are yours from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For those who are watching online, I don't do real well standing around up here in one spot. I tend to move around. And today I'm going to move down here closer to the congregation. Because I want to find out from you. It's about time. It's about time. Now, when somebody says that to you, what are you hearing? What are you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> Having lunch. <laughs> yeah, I, when I heard my dad say, it's about time, that meant I had overstayed whatever it was that I was doing instead of what he had said. And there were going to be consequences. Somebody says, it's about time. Usually, in that voice, it has something to do with negative connotation, doesn't it? Uh, early service, Joey Seven had said something to me, and I, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. He said that basically the root of a lot of disagreements and conflict come from unmet expectations. And he's right. And a lot of them have to do with time. Now, I want to make it clear, expectations are great, but they have to be clearly communicated. If you don't tell me what your expectations are, how can I possibly meet them? And even if you do tell me your expectations, there's a possibility I still may not be able to, just because of who I am, my personality, the time available. You want me to go by and pick up something from the dry cleaners and get a gallon of milk from the store and do this and do that? And there's not enough time. And when you get home, somebody says, well, it's about time. And it, it's because the expectations were so great. It also has to do with the fact that you and I are good at putting off, or I should say bad, at putting off things that need to be done. Someone finally comes to you and apologizes. You didn't say it with your lips, but in your heart you thought, it's about time, right? You see your adult kids growing up, and they're finally making wise choices. You think to yourself, it's about time. Oh. I like the fact that we have this little logo for today. You saw it on your email stuff. That clock, that watch in the background is so important because it's always ticking. And we do not know when it's going to stop ticking for us. I think that may be the way Jesus' disciples felt in that Mark 4 reading. He had finished teaching. He says, all right, let's go, boys, the other side of the lake. So they go down and they get in a boat and they start off. Now, did you notice there are other boats with them? But the Holy Spirit causes Mark to focus in just on the boat with Jesus and his disciples. Partway across, what happens? Big storm. Texas-sized wind and big waves like they would have in the Gulf of Mexico if it was 80 miles an hour. The boat is taking on water. This is a fishing boat. 
it's not a boat with the high sides to it. It has low sides so they can pull the nets and the fish over. Except now instead of fish, what are they getting? Water. Lots of water. And the disciples are scared to death. Meantime, what is Jesus doing? Sleeping in the stern of the boat on a cushion. I can just see the disciples looking. How can he sleep through this? When is he going to wake up and do something? This sounds like so many of the passages we hear in Scripture, doesn't it? Just like the ones we had in Bible class with Job and his complaints, with Habakkuk. How long, oh Lord, are you going to let this go on? And they finally go over and they wake up Jesus. They say, it's about time. It's about time he does something. And there's, there's the nub for us. Many of our struggles and expectations and our faith come because we think it's about time that Jesus did something for us and it obviously has not yet taken place. That's about time. And they say, Lord, don't you care? Don't you give a rip that we're, per we're perishing? I can just see him standing up. <sighs> Looks at the waves. Be still. Be quiet. And just like that, that lake surface is as smooth as glass. I would love to know what was going on in the other boats, but we're not told. Maybe we'll find out when we get to heaven. But Jesus acts at the right time, in the right way, for the right purpose, when He's ready. And those of us who wait, he's not punishing us. It's not that we've been bad. Just managed to unhook myself from the microphone again. Goes in the pocket. There we go. It's that you and I deal with other people. Family, loved ones, friends, people at work, people in the neighborhood. And we don't always get along. A country sorely divided. It's about time we learn to get along. And as I told the children, there's one place to find out how to do that. It's in God's Word. Because you see, Paul picks up on this idea of it being time. It's about time. He spoke it to the Corinthians. And he said to them, I'm gonna, going to talk to you like children. And he doesn't mean babies, that he's insulting them. I'm speaking to you as if you were my own children. I'm speaking to you in love. Don't let the grace of God be in vain in your life. Pay attention. Let the light bulb come on. And in fact, he uses a verse. It's a quotation from the Old Testament. He says, now is the day of salvation. Now is the day appointed by the Lord. Now. Some 40 years ago, I was still pastored down at St. Paul, Fort Worth where Carolyn and I still attend today. And it's that church with the real steep roof right off I-30, where close to where the old Mrs. Baird's bread used to be. Summit Avenue. One day a man walked into my office. He had something to say. He said, I want to thank you. He said, actually, I want to thank the young man that gets up every week and puts the letters on the marquee on the hillside by your church. That church has this 
big. It's like about a 10 or 12 foot pedestal base. And then on top of that is a big marquee that you slide all the letters in and you can put pretty good scripture in that one. For 70 years, that's the only thing that's gone in there. Scripture and maybe worship time, that's it. This man said, I want to thank. And if, you don't, if he's not here, I want you to pass my thanks to him. The young man that puts those letters in because he said, one day I was driving down I 30 going through town, heading west. He was on his way out of town, and he had determined this was going to be the day he ended it all. His life was a shambles. His business, bankrupt. His family, devastated. His personal life, he was alcoholic. And he said, I'm not going to put up with it anymore. And as he drove down I-30, he saw this man up on that pedestal, putting in the letters, and he had just put in, now is the day of salvation, 2 Corinthians 6. And this man pulled his car over to the side of the road, stopped, broke down in tears, turned around, went home, and started getting counseling and help. It was literally the first day of the rest of his life. Because now, now is the day of salvation. I have no idea. At age 75, I don't know how many days God has planned for me. But I plan on using them to his glory if possible. I don't know what the situation is with your family. But I know with my own family, there are members that I pray fervently for them and I do everything I can to speak to them because I don't know that they're going to be in heaven. They're struggling. And it's not just struggling with faith. And I don't know how long they have. Now is the day. It's about time I do something, say something. And it's about time you do something as well. As individuals, as a congregation, as members in the body of Christ. We are so prone to come to church on Sunday, look at the colored glass, listen to the pretty music, and go away with a good feeling and do nothing. That won't cut it. That won't cut it. Now is the day of salvation. And now is the day that God says to you and to me, that watch is written on your hearts. And that cross is written on your hearts. And it's time. It's about time. We do something. We don't sit back and we wait for somebody else. We don't sit back and wait until we've called a new pastor. We don't sit back and wait once he's here to let him lay out this grandiose vision of what we're going to be in 20 years. Now. Now. And we do it because Christ is in us. You can't do it by your strength. I can't do it by my strength. Lord, help me. If it's my strength, I'll mess it up more than I ever have even while I was here. We will make our mistakes, but God will use us in spite of those. Just like Paul said. We've been in prison. We've been beaten. We've gotten all these things happen to us. And still God uses us. Let it be with you, with your family, and let his spirit show you the way. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, this is the day you have made. We rejoice. We're glad in it. We 
also know that it's a day you've appointed us to go out. To go out these doors and be the people of your kingdom that you've called us to be. I ask your blessing upon this congregation in their search for a pastor. I ask that your spirit give them guidance and peace and joy. And that whoever this person is, you have already appointed them. You've already picked them out. And I ask that you give them great joy as they serve in this setting and this community. Now is the day, Lord. Give us your strength, give us your peace, and give us your strong right hand. Amen. Now, my friends in Christ, may that peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.